A central concept of operant conditioning is that any given behavior is dependent upon the consequences of that behavior. It is the subject's behavior that is instrumental in obtaining the reinforcer. Reinforcers can be either positive or negative, and both seek to increase the likelihood of a behavior occurring again. Now in this context, these need to be understood in terms of adding or removing, as opposed to good or bad. So for example, positive reinforcement is the presentation of a rewarding stimulus, something the subject wants. But negative reinforcement is the removal of an adverse stimulus. A reinforcement schedules relate to positive reinforcement, and these are very important. For many years, researchers only used continuous reinforcement schedules in their experiment, so they reinforced the desired behavior every time it occurred. The thing is that in real life, our behavior is not reinforced every time it occurs, and we are subjected to a variety of reinforcement schedules. Now, to understand the use and the effects of various reinforcement schedules, it's helpful to see how it is described on a cumulative recorder. This is a device on which a pen makes a, a mark on a steadily moving bit of paper. Um, for each response, this pen moves upwards a little. So if the subject makes no response, the line remains straight. Slow response will make the line go up a little and the faster response will be indicated by a steeper slope. Our reinforcers are also recorded, but overall it is the general shape of the curve more so than the individual responses themselves that are of primary interest. Our reinforcement schedules can be divided into two main groups, ratio schedules and interval schedules. These in turn can vary in two ways, they can be fixed or variables. You can easily remember these if you think of a 2 by 2 matrix like this one. So let's take a look at each of these. First we have a fixed ratio reinforcement schedule. Here you know that the consequence will occur after you have performed the behaviour a predictable number of times. These schedules are designated by FRN, where N is the number of responses required. So for example, if the experimenter is working with a rat in a Skinner box, he may set the equipment to require 10 responses for each reinforcement, and this is then an FR10. On a cumulative recorder, it may look something like this. So as you can see, the schedules usually produces rapid rates of responding with short post reinforcement pauses and the length of the pause is directly proportional to the number of responses required. The small vertical slash indicates reinforcement, horizontal section requires no response, indicates no response and the diagonal portion shows a constant higher rate of response. So on an FR schedule um, experiment, an animal typically responds in bursts after reinforcement in pauses, then begins responding again at a higher constant rate. A real world example of an FR schedule would be that of a factory worker, where a worker might get paid $10 for every 100 item he makes. Essentially, the higher the output, the greater the pay. So not surprisingly, fixed ratio schedules uh, result in higher productivity. Next, we have the variable ratio reinforcement schedules. Now, these differ from fixed schedules in that the behavioral requirement for reinforcement varies randomly from one reinforcement to the next. You don't really know when the consequence will occur all you know is that the reinforcement will occur on average after you have performed the behavior a number of times. And this is randomly determined, but set as an average. Illustrated on the cumulative recorder, you can see that the characteristic pause after reinforcement that occurs in a fixed ratio schedule is eliminated in the variable schedule. And this produces an overall high consistent rate of responding. 
In a lab situation, a rat may be reinforced with food on a VR5 schedule. So on average, every five time, fifth time that the behavior is performed. In the real world, a variable ratio is precisely the type of ratio schedule designed into a casino slot machine in that it is program programmed to provide a winner on average every n response, such as every 75th time a game is played. So the slot machine may give a winner on the first pool, then the 30th, and then the 125th or so, um, but on average it works out to be every 75th pool. Next we have the fixed interval reinforcement schedule. Here a designated amount of time must pass and then a certain response must be made in order to get reinforcement. On the cumulative recorder this schedule usually produces a scalloped pattern of responding in which little behaviour is produced early in the interval but as, as the interval nears the end the rate of responding increases. But overall, this produces a fairly low rate of responding. A lab example would be an FI5, where the animal would get reinforced for his first response after five seconds have elapsed. A real-world example is that of wages. A salaried employee know that he will receive his paycheck every week or every month. And this schedule is likely to provide a level of performance that will meet the minimum since workers have no incentive and working beyond the minimum does not result in more pay. Lastly, we have a variable interval reinforcement schedule. As with the variable ratio schedule, the pause after reinforcement can be eliminated by shifting from the fixed interval to the variable interval schedule. In this way, a steady rate of responding will be generated. How high that rate is will depend on the frequency of the reinforcement. A lab example would be a VI-15, where food is delivered to a rat on average every 15 seconds. A real-world example would be checking your email, which most people do several times a day. Sometimes you get mail, sometimes you don't. There is no set time at which you expect a given amount of mail, but you keep checking it anyway. So when you look at the four types of reinforcement schedules, you can clearly see that these produce different outcomes. In addition to that, there are several other factors that will impact on performance. Some of these include the nature of the reinforcer that is delivered and three key features, quality, rate and delay. Research shows that higher quality reinforcers and short delays yield better results. The amount of the reinforcer is also a factor where we have a tendency to prefer large amounts as opposed to small ones. So for instance, a salesperson who works on a commission is more likely to invest time and effort in selling larger items with larger commissions rather than smaller items. And regardless of the reward, we have to want to perform the behaviour in the first place and we have to be motivated to do so.